for the last 15 years, we've seen Aboriginal people take very prominent public positions on natural resource development, whether it's oil and gas, development from the ground, whether it's pipeline transportation, mining activity, and, and uh, hydro developments. We've seen Site C protests in British Columbia over hydroelectric dam. Um, that is a logical, natural, and actually altogether beneficial sort of outcome of a whole series of court cases and political processes. Indigenous peoples have very strong rights. The problem is Indigenous peoples don't have very clear rights. It's not absolutely obvious as to where the limits of Aboriginal rights and authority happen to rest. rest. Um, there is a duty to consult and accommodate. Under the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, it's also defined as a free, requiring free prior informed consent, which some Indigenous leaders, but not all, claim is a veto. So we have Aboriginal people who say, we can stop this. You have non-Aboriginal people and government saying, no, you can't. As long as we consult and as long as we accommodate, we can actually make this work and we can actually, actually proceed. But there's another part of this process that gets way too little attention. And that is that a lot of Indigenous peoples actually support these initiatives. We have Indigenous communities in the oil sands areas that are primary beneficiaries of oil, oil sands development. We have Aboriginal people who are working on pipelines. We have Aboriginal people who want to own pipelines. We have Aboriginal people who want to see these pipelines proceed. Kinder Morgan has signed agreements with, with several dozen uh, First Nations along the pipeline route. They will bring jobs, they will bring annual, annual income and other benefits directly to those communities. And quite frankly, nobody else is lined up to bring benefits to those communities. Um, there's no other opportunities in those communities except what comes through these pipelines and for, for many of them right now. Um, so what we're actually seeing, we're hearing a lot about Indigenous protest. We're not going to hear, because it's, it's actually kind of somewhat politically unwise, about Aboriginal groups that have found a very decent and fair place within the natural resource sector and in the pipeline industry generally. So we have a whole bunch of First Nations who support the pipeline development. We have a bunch of First Nations who oppose the pipeline development. The ones who oppose it are primarily along the coast and they are afraid of the, the fate of um, uh, ocean navigation, of potential you know, shipping problems. They've got grave concerns that are actually not really about the pipeline, it's about what you do with the stuff that comes out of the pipeline at the end and how do you disperse it and how do you, how do you get it safely to, to international, international markets. So I think it's really important for Canadians to realize that this is not an easy decision uh, for Indigenous peoples. Even the ones who supported it went through excruciating discussions locally as to whether this was the right thing to do and the right time to do it. The people on the coast, there are some people who are opposed and there's some Indigenous people there who think as long as we get enough benefits and as long as there's enough guarantees and safety, we will happily see it proceed. Mm -hmm.